Hey, welcome to this episode of 15 Minute Fridays. My name is Jeff Atkinson. I serve as one of the directors of agronomy here at Harold's. And this week we're talking about fertilizer sparging explained. And first question is, well, what is fertilizer sparging? Very simply, it's a process of coating a fertilizer blend or a fertilizer substrate with an agronomic input that's going to provide some sort of additional value to the fertility that's being applied. Now, most commonly, that can be things like herbicides, pre-emergent herbicides specifically, insecticides, or even micronutrients, and in some cases, fungicides, in order so that when you apply the granular fertilizer, you're also getting the additive benefit of these added materials. To kind of give you an idea conceptually or visually of how this process works, think about it as a fertilizer blender, as in this video on your screen, and then as a material is added, which is indicated by the green color, as the material tumbles and spins, or as the fertilizer tumbles and spins, all of the substrate, the fertilizer substrate, is coated by the added material. Again, it could be a pre-emergence herbicide, it could be an insecticide, or it could be a micronutrients package that's added to the exterior of the fertilizer prills. But why would you do this? Why does it make sense, both operationally, agronomically, financially, all of those things, to apply a sparge fertilizer. Well, the main take home point is that it increases efficiency of your operations. You can make two applications in one. Think about this from a LCO perspective, right? If you're making an application of a granular fertilizer, you can also make an application of a pre-emergent herbicide. So the amount of time that you're going to spend on a property is significantly reduced, if not cut in half. From the perspective of a golf course superintendent, now the limited labor staff that much of the golf course industry is working through, now they can use the labor more efficiently by applying both fertility and other agronomic inputs at the same times. From Again, from an LCO perspective, it also allows flexibility in an LCO truck that is rigged up to maybe to spread granular fertilizer and spray. Think about it this way. Let's say if you have a granular fertilizer blend that's sparged with the pre-emergence herbicide, that spray tank can now include a post-emergent herbicide or an insecticide or some other type of material that can serve as an additional spot application in addition to the granular fertilizer that's being applied that's been sparged with a pre-emergence herbicide. From an application, from an environmental safety perspective, it eliminates spray drift. So when we're out making spray applied applications, if it's a windy day or if it's a hot day that's going to promote volatilization of active ingredients. When a material is sparged on the exterior of a granular fertilizer and applied through a granular spreader, it significantly reduces the opportunity for that active ingredient to move to a, an off-target site or to have off-target effects via volatilization or spray drift. And then finally, again, from an LCO perspective, it limits excessive products. So think about it this way, especially if you're an LCO that might be just starting up, just starting to get a, a few yards under your belt, a few properties under your belt, is that when you buy a product in a liquid form, that product, the way that it's commercially packaged, is packaged in such a way that it's going to treat a large acreage. For example, if you buy one gallon of Barricade 4FL, it's going to cover, at one pound of active ingredient per acre, it's going to cover roughly 174,000 square feet. Whereas when you buy one bag of Barricade, 50-pound bag, applied at the equivalent rate of one pound of active ingredient per acre, one bag is only going to cover just over 7,000 square feet. So if you buy one gallon, you're committed to investing in 100, covering 174, but if your business only has, let's call it, 25, 50,000 square feet at this point in time, that's going to be a lot of extra inventory, extra product that's going to sit on your shelf until you have to go back around and make another pre-emerge herbicide application. So it just gives you more flexibility in terms of uh, matching the sizing of the product that you purchase with the area that is going to be treated. Now, with sparge fertilizers, the spread rate equals application rate. We're going to spend a little bit of time on this, but the example that I'll use here is dimension 0.125%. So that means that this bag of fertilizer, this 24010, is sparged with 0.125% dimension. So let's look at what that means. So if you say, hey, 200 pounds per acre times 0.125%, if I apply 200 pounds of product 
of this fertilizer, 24010 blend per acre, that's going to achieve 0.25 pounds active ingredient per acre. Now, reference up here at top, the dimension label rates on the liquid product and all dimension products is 0.25 pounds of active to half a pound of active ingredient per acre. So this 200 pounds per acre, applying a 0.125% sparge rate provides us with a low label rate of dimension. But as we adjust the spread rate, we can adjust the spread rate to achieve the target of active ingredient load per acre. So if we adjusted the spread rate to 150 pounds per acre, we're doing all the same math here, multiply 150 times 0.125, that gives us 0.1875 pounds active ingredient per acre. So that's actually below the label rate. So this would be a not, not a recommended application. But if we go up to 400 pounds per acre, now we're able to achieve the high label rate, 0.5 pounds of active ingredient per acre. And so our spread rate then becomes how we adjust our application rate of the post-emergent herbicide. Now, there are some other considerations. I'd encourage you to get with your heralds rep about this, but as this spread rate changes, you want to ensure if you go higher or lower that you're adjusting the fertilizer analysis within the sparge fertilizer so that you're also applying the appropriate amount of nutrients per thousand or nutrients per acre. And this is certainly achievable through, again, discussion with your heralds rep. But there's also ways, let's say, in a looking at it a different way, let's say, okay, I'm set at a certain spread rate, but I want to also apply a certain amount of active ingredient per acre. Well, a lot of our sparge products that we have available are going to continue to use dimension here as an example. We have multiple options of sparge rates. So here listed in the table here, sparge rate in the column all the way to the left are the different sparge rates that we do have available for dimension. So 0 0.125, 0 0.15, 0 0.17, 0 0.19, and 0.25. And so what I've done here is calculated what the spread rate, how many pounds of product would need to be applied per acre to provide the same 0.25 pounds of active ingredient per acre for each one of our sparge rates. So at 0.125, your spread rate would need to be 200 pounds per acre to provide a quarter pound of active ingredient per acre, whereas the higher sparge rate, 0.25%, that spread rate would need to be 100 pounds per acre to provide the equivalent amount of 0.25 pounds of active ingredient per acre. Now, it's important to note that yes, we do have the flexibility to adjust the spread rate, but it's also important to note that doesn't mean that it's a good idea to apply 100 pounds per acre to achieve this quarter pound active ingredient per acre rate, and I'll show you why. There's a concept called the area of influence with fertilizer applications, right? You think about it conceptually, every granule that's applied, let's say you have a number of granules per square foot. As the active ingredient comes off of the fertilizer carrier, it's going to influence an area around that particle, around the fertilizer particle. And ideally, we want the area to, of influence or the zone of influence to overlap from particle to particle so that there are no gaps in the pre-emergent coverage or the fertilizer coverage, for that matter, between granules. So in this case, this is representative of a low spread rate. This is representative of maybe 100 pound per acre spread rate to where you have the individual fertilizer prills, which are represented by the green dots, and then the zones of influence, which are represented by the blue circles. As you'll notice, there's areas in between each one of these fertilizer granules that is not contacted by a zone of influence. So this would be an application that even though maybe the appropriate amount of active ingredient was applied, there's going to be a large opportunity for weeds to germinate and establish within the gaps of the zones of influence. Alternatively, this is representative of an appropriate spread rate. So let's say this is maybe 200 pounds per acre or 250 pounds per acre. Now we have enough granules on the soil with overlapping zones of influence so that we have an appropriate amount of both fertility coverage and also granular fertilizer coverage. Now here's an example of what this may look like in terms of fertility if you don't have a high enough spread rate. And the same concept can also be applied to coverage of pre-emergent herbicides. So this is an early spring application to a fescue bluegrass 
mixed stand. And what I want you to notice is the relative modeling, the, the areas of yellow turf and the areas of green turf. And what this is indicative of are fertilizer granules that are having a localized effect, but the zones of influence are not overlapping. They're not crossing over one another and not creating a uniform greening effect. Think about this in terms, again, as a pre-emergence application. All these areas that are yellow in this photograph are also going to be lower or have lower contents of the pre-emergence active ingredients who are likely going to have spotty pre-emergence weed control in this area. And this is what we call a speckling effect. As a general rule of thumb, now these aren't dead set, but as a general rule of thumb for many grade blends, so SGN 120 and below, we would like to see a minimum of 150 pounds per acre of product. But because these products are SGN 120, they have a smaller granule size, you're gonna have more granules per square foot, even at a lower spread rate, so you still get nice even coverage. In comparison, when you look at a reg size blend, so let's call those SGN 260 and above, these are materials that are typically, typically going to be applied for lawn care or rough type applications. We want a minimum spread rate of at least 200 pounds per acre, if not higher. And that's because you have fewer particles per square foot, even when you apply the same amount of material per acre. And so just rules of thumb, but certainly more is generally better in terms of pounds of product applied per acre, even if you're talking about mini blends or reg blends. So if you have a bag of fertilizer and you're saying, hey, is my bag of fertilizer, is it sparged or is it not sparged? There's a few different ways you can tell and some are better than, than others. Um, this is one example, but this isn't a great way to tell. This is an example of raw urea on the left versus urea that has been sparged with barricade on the right. Now, barricade is very easy to tell if it's been sparged or not, or at least if, if a fertilizer has been sparged with barricade or not because barricade is yellow. And so it's gonna turn any substrate, any fertilizer substrate that's sparged, it's going to turn it yellow. But there's other pre-emergence herbicides, for example, Ronstar or Stayguard or Dimension, all three of those are clear or essentially clear. They provide very little color change to the fertilizer substrate. So it's very, it's, it's challenging to tell if a fertilizer blend has been sparged with one of those materials. Again, Ronstar, Stayguard, or Dimension, whereas with Barricade, it's very easy to tell. So this isn't a great way to tell if your fertilizer blend is sparged or, or not sparged. If you're buying a product from Harold's or if you're buying a, a fertilizer blend from Harold's, you can look at the bag as a generally a good indicator. If the fertilizer bag is white, that's an indicator that the material is not sparged. If the fertilizer bag is yellow, that's an indicator that the material is in fact sparged with a herbicide or just a, a pesticide in general. But the best way to tell is to look at the product label. And this is the, the fail safe way to look at the, to find out if a material is sparged is by looking at the product label. Example here on the left, you see 4100, no mention whatsoever of fertilizer sparging or a active ingredient that's applied to the fertilizer. In comparison, look at the label to the right. This is a 31010. It clearly says right in the header, fertilizer with a celeprin. If it was barricade, it would say fertilizer with barricade. If it was a dimension, it would say fertilizer with dimension. But it's very clear in bold letters exactly what is applied to the fertilizer blend. It's a lot of information, a lot to take in, and we have a lot more options than what I have discussed here today. In fact, there's nine unique sparge options. That's just looking at different active ingredients or combinations of active ingredients. When you look at the different sparge rates or the different sparge loads, there's actually several more than the nine uh, different unique sparge options. We have very, as you can see here, uh, there are multiple sparge options for each one of these individual products that are listed here on the first page. And I encourage you to get your Herald's Rep. We do have the sparging guide that's available through your Herald's Rep if you're interested in learning more about specific details of our different sparge options that can be combined with our granular fertilizer. But this is a neat place to start as far as deciding how to incorporate a sparge material into your granular fertility program. And what I've done here is I've zoomed in on just dimension, the dimension component of our sparge fertilizer guide. Just want to show you the information that's included within the sparge fertilizer guide for each one of the active ingredients that we apply.
brand name dimension active ingredient dithiopyr. We also have the herbicide resistance um, action committee code. So in this case, it would be three because it's a it's a, a my, mitotic inhibitor. And we also have, this is good information before I get ahead, this is good information to have, especially for rotational options. So if you have a different mode of action, for example, you can say, all right, well, I applied a group three last year for annual bluegrass control. Perhaps I need to apply a different mode of action this year. And if a herbicide has a different HRAC code associated with it, for example, let's say it's a group 15 herbicide. Okay, well, now that tells me it has a different mode of action and I can rotate to that different HRAC code and prevent development of resistance in whatever weed I'm targeting, whether that's annual bluegrass, crabgrass, goosegrass, what have you. Do you have a list of the different use sites as described on the on the pesticide label or on the herbicide label? We also have a general outline of the benefit that this material provides. So for an example, with Dimension, it's an excellent pre-emergence grassy weed control product, provides some level of broad leaf weed control. But what's really unique about Dimension, what's unique about Dithiopyr in the world of pre-emergence herbicides, is that it also provides early post-emergence crabgrass control. So you have a little bit wider application window of when you can effectively apply Dithiopyr. Also, according to the label, we have all the different turf species that are included as safe to apply dimension to on the label. Of course, reference the label to ensure what the specific application rate is for that turf grass species. We have a list of all the different spar rate options, the application rate range to achieve the labeled application rates. Great information, so I encourage you to reach out to your Herald's rep, the QR code here on your screen will actually take you to a location tool or a locator tool for your Herald sales rep. And through the process, through the conversation, consider is the efficiency of your program optimized? Can you apply a fertilizer plus a asparged ingredient to maybe make two applications in one, which is going to allow you to use your labor that you have more efficiently, more effectively, and ultimately lead to more revenue? We'll catch you next time on the next episode of 15 Minute Friday.